So what we're going to be doing today is I've got a new barrel for my rifle. It's a Bighorn Origin. So we're going to be going over that. I'm going to start off by going over the tools we need and then I'll show you my process. I've got a barrel from Preferred Barrel Blinks chambered in 260 Remington. So I'm just going to show you kind of uh, what I got going on, how I install this barrel, check the headspace, and then we'll get out and see how it shoots. Starting off, you're gonna need some sort of way to hold the barrel. So I have a Bighorn Origin, and Preferred Barrel Blinks offers a pre-fit shouldered barrel. What that means is there's no barrel nut. The action is held to tolerances so that a lot of companies can just cut the barrel without ever seeing your action, which is one of the really nice features of it, one of the reasons I chose to go with the Origin over some other actions. What that means though is you're going to need some tools. At a minimum, you got to be able to hold the barrel somehow. Now, I've seen some videos of people doing it with just a regular bench vise. I would not recommend that. I, uh, it's an expensive part. I wouldn't be clamping it in just a, any old vise. So what I have here is I've got the Viper barrel vise. I picked this up for about, uh, I wanna say $60. And uh, it's been great. I've taken the barrel off and on a few times before my new barrel got here. And it, it holds it pretty well. I'll show you kind of a trick I do to protect the barrel when we get to that point. Next, you're gonna need an action wrench. Now, most of these are going to be specific to your action or an action that's similar. For example, I have the Zermatt Arms action wrench that goes in my Bighorn Origin or Zermatt Origin now. And it probably would work for, with a lot of other Remington 700 two lug action clones. If you have like a Ruger American or Ruger Precision, that's a different action wrench. If you've got, you know, Curtis, anything else that's not just a two lug uh, just a two-lug action, probably going to be a different action wrench. I also have a torque wrench because you're going to need that to torque down the barrel to consistently put it back on. And we'll be doing some testing in the future, hopefully showing kind of the return to zero with the origin and the preferred barrel blanks barrel. This one is just one that I picked up at Harbor Freight. I think it goes up to 80 foot pounds right on the action wrench. It says that uh, for a shoulder barrel, 223 to 308, 75 to 85 foot pounds. So this should work just fine and it's proven to work fine for me. Next, you're gonna need some sort of wrench for the barrel vise, just to tighten that down. I just got an open and adjustable wrench. And then some of the most important pieces are going to be a go and no go gauge. Now when I got mine, they didn't have any go gauges. So what I'm doing, use caution doing it this way. What I have here is I've got a piece of sized and turned and ready to go brass. So that's what I'm gonna use for my go gauge since that's gonna be my uh, loads. If it fits, it'll be safe as long as the no go gauge does not close. And I'll kind of show you how to check that, but it's very important. Even with these pre-fits, just double check because tolerances can stack. You just wanna make sure you're getting a safe firearm above all else. With my barrel vise, what I did is I threw it on a piece of one inch by two inch aluminum so that I can put it in my receiver hitch on my truck. It's cold outside though, so today I just got it kinda of set up on my reloading bench here. And I'm gonna show you on here well, I think that's about all for the tools that you're going to need. Also, in addition to this, you're gonna need some 3M grease, anti-seize grease for the threads. And I'll show you applying that when we put on the barrel. Let's go get it done. So normally I attach this to my truck, but for today, I'm gonna to be doing it in here. I just got this portable reloading set up and uh, we're just gonna attach this with this clamp.
Typically I would attach this to my truck, but for today, since it's cold outside, I'm just going to attach it here. I'm going to use this clamp, clamp it down. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to remove the barrel that's already on here. First I'm going to take out my bolt. I'm going to leave the trigger on. What I'll do here is I'll remove my bolt and then we can take this barrel off. Now one of the things I do is I get is a piece of uh, cloth or a lot of people will use a drywall tape. Wrap that on here just to keep it from marring it up. I'm going to slide this in here. As close as you can get to the action, the better. Making sure it's not going to hit anything. Now that I got that in there, I'm going to tighten it down. You want to get this pretty tight. Uh, don't be afraid, especially with a steel barrel. With the carbon fiber, you want to be a little more gentle. But with a steel barrel, uh, definitely crank those down. Now, I already had this one loose, so it's usually a little bit more challenging than that to undo, but not bad still. And we'll just remove the action. Set that aside. Then I'll take this barrel out and we'll put the new barrel in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the barrel. This is how the barrel came in this tube. And it had a lot of paper wrapped around it, keeping it safe. I've taken that off. I've already ran a oil patch down the barrel just to clean out anything. And I've also checked what my overall length is going to be for the 140 ELDM that I plan to shoot. So this is how the barrel looks. The uh, laser etch it all the way around. Make sure you can see what your barrel is. Came with a thread protector. I got the MTU contour, so it's pretty beefy. I'm going to be using this for competitions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this again, wrap it around here to protect it. I'm going to slide it in my barrel vise. I'm being ginger just not to scratch it up or anything. It shouldn't. This is powder coated or something I believe they say and it's not supposed to damage or mar. But I'll still be a little careful. I'm going to hand tighten these down. Now this is where you're going to see, I'm going to crank on these because you want them tight. You do not want that barrel slipping. I'm going to tighten these down. Fairly tight. And before I do anything, I'm going to add a little bit of this grease. Just got this off Amazon. You can pick it up quite a few places. And it doesn't take very much. If you've built AR-15s, anything like that, it's very similar. Just putting that on there so it'll be easy to get off. And I'll do the same thing when I install my muzzle brake. Now that we've got it greased up, we're ready to install the action. This has got a pinned recoil lug, so I got that in the correct place. And you want to be very careful. You do not want to cross thread or damage 
or force anything. It should just go on nice and easy. Once you get it going, and it should, not a lot of slop in this. It's a pretty tight thread, so that's good. Looks like I got my paper just a little too close. Don't want to get that pinched in there, so I'm just gonna move that as I tighten this up. Now I'm gonna hand tighten it before I move on to the action wrench and torque wrench. So that's snug right there. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert this. This particular one's got a slot here for my bolt release. So I'm going to slide it in there all the way. And then I've got mine, like I said, I got mine set to 80 foot pounds. And I'm just going to tighten this on there. Now that we have that tightened on there, I'm going to reinsert my bolt and I'm going to check for headspace. Like I said, a go gauge would be a better way to do this. I don't have one, so I'm just using a piece of, of resized brass that I'm going to be using. The nice thing about the Origin as well is it's both a controlled round feed and it also has a mechanical ejector. So there's no ejector plunger pushing on that. So you shouldn't get any false readings. I don't have to remove anything. As you can see, that goes down nice and easy, just as easy as if the chamber were empty. So I know that my rounds, my fired, my formed brass, my resized brass is going to fit in there. So now we're going to check the no-go gauge. This is the one that's, in my opinion, more important because this is going to tell you if you have excessive head space and that's when you get case head separations and stuff. Now you want to be very careful with these gauges. They are precision machined, so if you drop them, they will not, they may not be good anymore. All right, so I put that in. You don't want to force it. I could probably hammer this down, but you don't want to do that. I mean, it, it does not go down at all. Not at all. So that tells me that this is head spaced and safe to shoot.